All right, so the question of the day is what is Grafana? What happens when we pair it with Rust and what good is it to us in the end? Just to give you a really quick sneak peek about what you're gonna end up with at the end of this video, this is Grafana and this is all of the information that we can extract from our Rust server. And as you can see, there's a ton of it. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I'm teaching you everything that you need to know about owning and operating a successful Rust server. If you take any value out of this video, just do me a simple favor and click on that like button. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notification bells so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. If you wanna take your support even one step further, you can become a YouTube member by clicking on that join button down below. Or of course, you can check out my Patreon at patreon.srtbull.com. So a little bit of history about my experience Experience with Grafana. It goes back months. I was first shown a dashboard of somebody else's server. I was absolutely blown away with how much information was on there and I was like, yep, I need to have that. I said, yep, I'm experienced with Rust. I know what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. This should be easy. Super easy, right? Wrong. It wasn't. So I started going through the steps trying to figure out how to get this Grafana dashboard from my own server, hit a roadblock and said, you know what? This is way out of my league. I ain't even going to try this. Until one day, Lil Siv, who is a developer in my Discord and is very well known around the Rust community, he comes to me and says, hey, you should do a video on Grafana showing people how to do it. And I remembered back to when I tried to do it for myself and I was like, Ugh, man, that terrifies me. I don't know what I'm doing. And he says, you know what? Don't worry about it. I've completely simplified the process and he's right. He has. And you're going to see what that contribution is to the project here in a couple of minutes. But first things first, I need to tell you what you're going to need to have in order to make this work for your server. First of all, you're going to need somewhere to actually host your dashboard. So yes, technically you could do this on your local network if you wanted to, but I don't recommend doing that. What I do recommend you do is go to Hetzner.com, set up an account there, and for only a couple of bucks a month, you can set up a server on Hetzner that's going to host everything that you need to run your Grafana dashboard. One pro tip for you, while you're setting up your account on Hetzner.com, make sure you turn off your VPN or they're just going to immediately decline your application. So turn off your VPN, set up your account, turn your VPN back on, you're good to go. The next thing you're gonna need is the ability to set up two DNS records with your domain host. I'll show you what that looks like in a couple of minutes. And then you simply need the script from Little Civ's GitHub and then the actual dashboard from Pink Stink's GitHub. Say that five times real fast. All of the links for everything that I'm using in this video is gonna be in the video description down below, letting you know exactly where you need to go and quite possibly what you need to do there. But hopefully by the time you've watched to the end of this video, you have all of your questions answered. Okay, so you've set up your account with Hetzner, you verified, blah, blah, blah. I think they ask you for a PayPal, something linking, whatever. They just need to know that you're going to be able to pay your bills. So once you're in your Hetzner dashboard, it's going to look something like this, except you probably won't have this default one on there. It should just have an empty box that says new project. And that's where I'm going to start right now. So we're going to start a new project. I'm just going to call this one YouTube test. You're going to want to make sure that you name this something that makes sense for you add a project. So let's click on create server. And this is where it's going to bring us to the options where we can select what kind of features we need for this server. We can obviously pick our location. If you're in the US, it makes sense to pick a US. If you're in Europe, it makes sense to pick a European one. It obviously only makes sense to pick the server location that's closest to you. Now the type of image that we're going to use for this is very important. So we're going to use Ubuntu 22.04. It will also work with 20.04, but let's just use the newer one. If they do happen to release a newer version of Ubuntu, don't automatically assume that this is going to work with this script from Lil Siv because it probably won't unless he rewrites the script. So we're just going to go with 22.04. We want to use a shared CPU. And in this case, for what we're using it for, we want the cheapest one possible. So I'm just going to pick this CPX 11 and it's going to cost me just under four euros a month. We can leave the networking at default. We don't need any SSH keys. We can pretty well leave everything else down here. Let me just quickly go through it real quick. We can leave it all at default. The one thing you might want to change is the name of this server. So let's call it something that makes sense for what it is that you're doing. So I'm just going to call this YouTube test Grafana panel. Obviously you would use whatever makes sense for you. And then in the bottom right hand corner, we can click on create and buy now. So what this is going to do is obviously set everything up for you. It's going to get your server up and running, and it's also going to send you an email with some very important information. And this is what that email is going to look like. It's going to have the username, which in most cases is going to be root, unless you've set up something different. It's going to have the IP address, as well as the password to log in. It is also worth noting that because you have all now seen that information, by the time you see this video, that server is going to be deleted. None of that information is going to be valid anymore. You can try, but it's not going to work. 
So the next step is obviously going to be logging into our server and then running the script that's been provided to us from Lil Civ, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. I just need to tell you about this. So I don't know Linux. I don't know what it means to SSH into a server. I don't know. I don't know anything about PuTTY, which is one of the ways that we can SSH into a server. I don't know anything about Termius, which is an alternative way to SSH into a server. So I have these products. I don't know how to use them and I don't know how to write Linux. I don't know how to speak Linux. I this is all a complete mystery to me. So these words that I'm expressing to you, most of the information has come from Lil Civ. This is not my knowledge base. I'm completely uncomfortable in this territory. I don't know the ins and the outs of this stuff. I just want to be fully transparent. This is just a little bit of a disclaimer for you. I will do my best to answer your questions, but in all honesty, you're going to want to join my discord and talk to Lil Civ directly. He will probably be a better resource. And no, I didn't ask his permission to mention that on the video. So I'm going to be using Termius to log into this server. Like I said before, you can also use PuTTY. I'm told that PuTTY is maybe a little bit simpler to use. I'm not really sure. I have Termius, so I'm going to use Termius. So I'm just going to click on new host. It's going to bring up this information on the right hand side of my screen. Let me just minimize myself there so you can see that better. So all of this information that you're going to need to log into your server is all in the email that I just showed you a minute ago. So we're just going to grab the IP address. Username is root. Grab the password real quick. And then we're going to click on connect, which is right behind my microphone there. And it's going to attempt to connect. We can click on add and continue. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to ask you to change the password from what it was in that email to something new, something you're going to remember. So I'm just going to copy that password again. I'm going to right click in Termius and then click on enter. Now, when you put in a password, anytime Termius or Putty for that matter prompts you for a password, it doesn't actually show you putting in the characters, which is a little bit frustrating and can be difficult at times, but that's the way it is. Click on enter and then it's going to prompt you for a new password. Obviously, we're going to do that same password again. And there we go. We're now logged into our server and we're ready to start getting to work. So we'll head on over to the link that I have in the video description down below. This is going to take us to Lil Civ's script that he's written specifically for this purpose. And we're going to grab that script. Now, I highly recommend that you go through and understand each one of these steps that you're doing. A lot of them I'm doing in video form right now, so I'm not going to go through each individual step. But the important part here is this is the script right here. We need to copy that to our clipboard and that's what we're going to run in our Termius terminal. And that of course looks just like that. I understand that the writing is really small here and honestly I'm okay with that because if you're doing this with me step by step then you're going to have your own version of this. Click on enter and just let it do its thing. The next thing it's going to ask you for is a influx DB username. Now that doesn't mean that you have to go set up an influx database or anything like that. The script is just prompting you for what username you actually want to use because the script is actually setting up the database for you. So you can use admin or your name or just something that you're going to remember as a username. So I'm just going to use admin for this case. And then of course we're going to select a password for that database. Again, it's not going to show any of your characters when you type them in, but they are there. And then it's going to ask us for a Grafana domain. So in my case, I'm just going to do YouTube test.rustadminacademy.com because that's a domain name that I already own. I'm going to go over to my domain host here in just a minute and actually write those DNS records in there so that it actually works. But for now, let's just get this part done. So YouTube test.rustadminacademy.com and then it's going to ask us the same thing for our influx DB domain. So just as an example, I'm going to do influx.rustadminacademy.com. You can do kind of whatever you want here. Just make sure that you write the DNS records the same way that you're entering them here. And then after you've entered your influx DB domain, it's going to do a bunch more steps and then it's going to prompt you for this section right here. This red lettering that you're seeing on my screen right now is telling me that I don't have that DNS record set up yet. So I need to go and do that. Did your certificate obtain correctly? And of course, no, it hasn't because I haven't set up that DNS record yet. So this domain is hosted at Namecheap.com. I highly recommend Namecheap. I don't have any promos with them or anything like that. They're just really cheap. Let's go into advanced DNS and we're going to write in these two records. So we're going to add a new record here and it is an A record. We're going to do the first one as you YouTube test and then it's asking for an IP address. The IP address is the IP address of the server which we got in that email a couple of minutes ago. So we're just going to post that in there like that. Click on the check mark and let it save. We're also going to do one more. Same thing, another A record. This one is called influx because that's what we called it a second ago in our Termius setup and the IP address is the same and we can click on save there and let that save. Now this process technically can take a little bit of time. Normally it's just a couple of minutes, but some domain hosts might tell you that this might take up to 24 to 48 hours. I've never once experienced that, but I guess technically if they say that's possible, then that's possible. 
So going back to our Termius panel, if we just answer this question honestly, did your certificate obtain correctly? We're gonna say no. And it's gonna go through and check again to see if that DNS record is actually valid or not. And as you can see here, I didn't do any editing tricks here. This was literally like 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds. And now I have a certificate, which is all of this information right here. No, this information is not gonna be valid by the time you all see this video, but it did obtain the record correctly. So now we can click on yes and let this carry on. And then once it's all done, it says installation complete. Your Grafana dashboard is located at blah, blah, blah. The address that we did a DNS record for. It's already been configured with your influx DB data source. You can now import the latest RSM dashboard from blah, blah, blah. I'm going to show you that here in a second. The default login is admin with the password admin. You're going to see where we use that in just a second. It's going to tell you that your influx DB instance is located at this address right here. You can actually copy that right quick and just pasta that in. And if you get an error 404, just like that, it says 404 page not found. It means that your database is set up correctly. So now this section right here that you see between the curly braces, which we're actually going to copy that and put it in a notepad. This is the configuration information that you're going to need for the plugin that we're going to install on the server that we want to be reporting this information from. So I've just put that into a notepad real quick. There's only one thing that you need to change in here, and that is the server tag right here. The server tag is what's going to show up right here. If, once your dashboard is up and running, if you're running multiple Grafana dashboards, this is obviously more important, but this is how it's going to appear right up here. So in my live example, in my real life example, it's called ominous 2x. But in my test example, I'm just going to call this YouTube test. So we can just hang on to this information. We don't have to do anything with it right now. Let's just go and see what our Grafana board looks like right now. This is where the username and password comes in that we just set up a second ago. All right. So if we go to the address YouTube test.rustadminacademy.com, this is the Grafana panel that it's going to take us to. Now, if you run into an issue where it doesn't actually take you to that location or it gives you an error or whatever, when you're putting in your address, just make sure you put in HTTPS colon slash slash and then that address. That's gonna prompt your browser to actually look for a proper security certificate, making sure that you're going to a secured location. So like our Termius panel said a minute ago, our username and password are gonna be admin. And that's just by default, it's gonna prompt you right away to change that password. And we can just click on submit and change our password, cool. Now it's gonna take us to our dashboard which obviously has nothing on it. And of course, we're gonna click on create your first dashboard right here. And we're going to be importing a dashboard right here, but we need to know where to get that dashboard from. It's gonna be the next link in the video description down below. It's gonna take you to Pink Stinks GitHub, and we scroll down. Of course, there's a whole lot of information in here. I highly encourage you read this over. Using the script that we've used from Lil Civ, technically you would start at step six on here because we've done everything before this already. So we're gonna click on this dashboard link right here. It's gonna download this dashboard to our local computer. Once we have the file downloaded to our local computer, we can click on import dashboard. And then we just wanna drag and drop it from our downloads folder or wherever you might have saved it into this section right here and then click on import and believe it or not this is your dashboard you're essentially done however we're not reporting any information yet because the dashboard doesn't know which rust server we want to be pulling information from so the next step is getting the plugin from pink stink which we can click right here download the latest version of rust server metrics.dll and because this is a dll your computer might freak out saying are you really sure you want to download this file and yes of course we do once we accept that it'll finish downloading into our downloads folder and now it's finally time to actually go to our rust server where we can install this plugin so because this is a Harmony mod or a DLL, however you want to word that, we actually want to shut down the server first. Once the server is shut down, we can go into our file manager for our server. We can go down into Harmony mods and we can just simply drag and drop the DLL from our local computer that we just downloaded into our Rust server. Once that's done, head back over to your console and simply restart your server. Once your server has finished booting up, you're gonna notice something changed in your file manager. So now you'll have this folder called Harmony Mods underscore data. And in here, you're gonna find your server metrics configuration file. So let's go into configurations. Let's just delete everything that's currently in that file and grab the configuration file that we saved on our notepad earlier. And we're just gonna pasta everything in there just like that. And again, I'm gonna remind you, the only thing you need to change right here is this server tag. Once this is set, 
set and we've reloaded this plugin, you cannot go back and change this. So just make sure that it's something that you want it to be. And then we'll go back over to our console and then we're going to reload the server metrics plugin by typing in server metrics dot reload CFG. And it'll give you a response saying configuration reloaded and you should be good to go. And as soon as you do that, you can go back over to your Grafana dashboard and you'll see that it has immediately started reporting information directly from the server. Now let's just do a quick reload on this page and we should see a whole bunch more information. So now everything is populating and this is going to provide you with an astronomical amount of information about your server. Player count, frame time, frame rate of the server, how much memory it's using, how many entities are on the server. It's just a ton of information. Invocation time. So how long is it taking for your Rust server to actually do something, whether that be placing a tree or somebody typing in chat or doing a save method or whatever. Anything that your server is doing on its own, it's going to literally tell you everything that it's doing right here and how long it took to actually perform that function. So now this is something that I'm actually learning real time. So just so that you're aware, my YouTube test server is actually running on carbon. While the processes are exactly the same, whether using carbon or oxide, it would appear as though the plugin hook times are not showing on carbon. Let me just refresh that. So I don't know if this is going to generate eventually or not, but that is the difference here. So plugin hook times definitely works on oxide. This server right here is an oxide server. Let's just scroll down here. Plugin hook times. Let that finish loading. Okay, so that's interesting. So on my oxide server, my live server, the one that players actually play on, plugin hook times is showing. Whereas on this carbon server, it's not showing any plugin information at all. So that is very important information. And I didn't know that before I was recording this video. So that's actually kind of huge. So looking at my oxide server, the one that is actually live with players on it, you can see information like bot response seems to be taking the longest hook times. And you can see some network traffic here. You can see a couple of spikes. So these are opportunities where you might be seeing lag on your server. And then you can go back and investigate what happened at that point in time. So like without doing any major investigations, I would say roughly that alpha loot did something right here on the left. I don't know if you can see that very well. And it created this network spike right here, our average client FPS. So the average over the players on this server, they're getting approximately about 70 FPS, just an astronomical amount of information. So if you're trying to diagnose a problem with your server and you don't know where the problem might be coming from, Grafana is probably going to show you exactly what's causing the issues. You might have a player that's causing lag on your server. You might have a plugin running that is just doing something really funky or calling a hook that it shouldn't be that's causing a huge drain on resources of your server. But this dashboard is going to tell you everything that you need to know. So going back over to the carbon server now that it's been running for a little while. Yeah, that plugin hook time is not showing me any information. So that is really good to know. It totally makes sense, though, like carbon is fairly new to the industry and it's OK. They're probably going to get to this eventually. But as of right now, this dashboard is not designed to report from carbon, but it would appear as though everything else is reporting. So all of the vanilla, like all of the base rust commands are all reporting as they should. So that's all good to know. So I hope this kind of takes the mystery out of Grafana. If you've never heard of Grafana, now is the time to introduce yourself to it. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool. I'm so glad Little Civ forced me to learn how to use it. I've always been envious of servers that actually had a Grafana panel for their servers. And to be honest with you, I was too much of a wuss to actually ask somebody for help. Finally, I did. I reached out to Siv himself and said, hey, man, like I need help with this. Can you get me sorted out so that I know what I'm talking about? And then I, I fell in love with that process so much that I had to come here and tell you all about it, too. So again, I'm going to reiterate, I'm not a pro with this stuff. I don't know Linux. It's a completely bizarre environment for me. If you ask me questions, I will do my very best to get you the answer, but I'll probably direct you in somebody else's direction so that you can get the answer directly from somebody that knows what they're talking about. I sincerely hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope this helps somebody out and I hope you're going to go set up your own Grafana dashboard. I don't have a video directly related to Grafana, so I'm just going to let YouTube pick whatever video shows up right here. Click down here if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel. And of course, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can click on that button down below me right now. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you again next week.